Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Alba, and I'm so grateful to be here with Christian de la Huerta, who's the creator of Soulful Power. And he's just finished publishing his first, uh, no, many books you've had, right? It's the second uh, book, the first of a second, series. Second book, the first of a series, Awakening Your Soulful Power, that is here to rock this earth. And I've had the pleasure of speaking with Christian about this beautiful inspiration that came to him to create this book and the series and he's also created a summit that is has all these visionary leaders and so christian i would love to poke your brain about this and you can inspire us with what caused you to create this and what your intention is for bringing out this awesome information and i just want to say that i've had a lot of teachers, mentors, guides, people that I've met in my lifetime that are amazing. And Christian is definitely, I, I was telling him, one of the top two men that I hold really high, up high in high regard, that is just super healthy, balanced, that is a role model for people. So definitely everybody check, click down below to all the links of how to get in touch with Christian and follow him. And I promise you, your life will be forever changed as mine. Mm. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I'm so touched uh, by those words. And poke away, ask whatever you want. <laughs> well, how did you how did you come about this awakening of soulful power? And I know right now in the world, you know, there's so much chaos going on, or it seems like, but I know that there's a deeper meaning in everything that's happening. So even for people that are struggling right now, um, what wisdom, does this time reveal to us and how your book is going to support us through this transition time for all of us? Yes, you know, it, it, is, it is such a, an intense and challenging time. Um, and you can say that it's all hands on deck. You know, I know many other people listening to you or, or watching this, maybe feeling that call to step into a role of, of leadership, into a, a role of uh, as healers. Um, and we can talk about that too, because a lot of us are conflicted about such words, you know, like heroism, power, teachers, healers, but we just don't have time for that ambivalence anymore. If, if anybody has had the, the slightest suspicion that we have work to do in, in this area, like this is it. This is like all hands on deck time. So both the book, Awakening the Soul of Power, and the, and the summit that we'll talk about later have the same purposes, the same intention. The book is the first of three. So the, the series is called Calling All Heroes. What does it mean to live heroically in the 21st century? You know, we may not have the horse hitched outside and the armors and the demons to slay, except the ones in here. And, and so that's what heroism in COVID has, has forced us already to expand what we think of heroism. You know, most of us think of, you know, superheroes and warriors, maybe firefighters. Now, because of COVID, we include in their healthcare practitioners and even grocery store clerks and, and the postal service people who, who are risking their health and sometimes their lives but by taking care of the rest of us. But what about the rest of us, right? How do, how do we own that hero that's inside of us? Um, and, and express it at this time, not only for our own personal fulfillment, but for the sake of the world, for the sake of humanity. Like yes. the, the planet will be fine. Each right? one of us is significant and the role that we play matters. I think that's yeah. what's going on. You know, when Wayne Dyer transitioned and um, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like what is the world going to do? And then there was this little voice saying, you got to step it up, girl. Yeah. Stop playing small. Yeah. And I think that this is another aspect that every single person has gifts to share, even if it's just cultivating your own heart, which is something massive that I've been doing these past couple months. I see the benefit of my own forgiving, forgiving myself, forgiving my past, my childhood, and really, really cultivating my own garden. That, that's it. In fact, that's one of the titles of, of the book. You know, it's what? <laughs> Cultivating our own garden. We must cultivate our, our own garden, which is, you know, it's a, it's a quote from Voltaire in his book, Candide, um, which basically was saying like, there was one teacher in the book who was saying, this is the best of all possible worlds. 
And so that's the last line of the book. It's like, maybe it's the best of all possible worlds. Um, and we must cultivate our gardens. You know, we got to take care of our own crap over here. And if we, if we each will do that and, and, by, and heal ourselves and let go of all the patterns you're referring to about playing small and selling out on our power. And, and how many times have, have we like stuffed ourselves into smaller boxes because of fear, you know, fear that if we really beat all of who we were and released our, our power and really stepped into our purpose, then people wouldn't, wouldn't handle it. And we might cause conflict and people might not like us or, or we might feel rejection. Uh, but the irony is that, that, that our power and our self-love is contingent on getting to that place that you're talking about, which is we just, we just no more playing small, right? I'm gonna be who I am no matter what. And all the right amazing people will show up miraculously when you do, everyone. I'm just here to let you know and know that you have us both to reach out to if you're feeling hopeless, helpless, scared, scared of really being yourself. You know, I work so much um, with couples that they're not really happy in the relationships and I feel like they're cellmates instead of soulmates. Mm -hmm. And then they're staying for the children. You know, they say, oh yeah, I can't get a divorce. I don't want my child to be affected. Well, listen, I had a divorce when my daughter was six years old and I have the best relationship with my 15 year old daughter. She's healthy. She is here. She's present. You know, she's embodied and um, we have the most amazing intimate conversations, heart to heart and sharing how she feels. And so it's not true that you have to have a dysfunctional child because you have a divorce. That is not true. I'm just letting everyone know. FYI. <laughs> No, that's completely true. And I've had that same conversation with many people with whom I've worked. It's like, you're actually doing a disservice to your child by selling out on your happiness and your potential. That the single greatest gift we can pass on to, a, to our child is to model for them our, our greatness. And, and if we're talking about, right, and like in the summit, we're envisioning what the, a new world can be like on the other side of this crisis. Like, it has to be it has to start here and it has to start with our happiness, right? So those kids have to look in our eyes and say, wow, I want some of what she's got. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that, mom. Tell me about your work. Tell me about your tantra work. Tell me about your yoga. Tell me about meditation, right? Because we embody it, mm -hmm. not because we're like telling them what to do. Yeah, I don't do that. So Awakening Your Soulful Power, the book, the first of its series, can you share a little bit more specifically about this first sure thank you um so yeah a lot of us are conflicted about power you know like, and no wonder like uh, so we want it but yet we're afraid of it we're afraid that we might abuse it and and no wonder because we've been conditioned to believe that power is evil that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely you know how many times have we heard that but or it's limited to only men <laughs> <laughs> well, what's what we're not told. That's a belief I had in the past as a child, as a yes, Latin girl. Right, so many misunderstandings. And and that if women stepped into their power, um, you know, then who who's what man is gonna want to be with her? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So then so then I mean we all do that, but in particular I mean, particularly women, right? So that power is not feminine. We're like, who said? Who said that we can talk about Kali like the this the the the, the goddess of, of destruction, um, who was also beautiful and, sex and sensual. Um, but anyway, so how do we, so, so the thing, what we end up doing then because of this ambivalent relationship is we reject power. And what we weren't told is that that saying about power corrupts was in the context of political power. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what the guy was talking about, Lord Agden. He wasn't talking about personal empowerment, which is what we're talking about. So, and, and every day we turn on the news or we read the headlines online and abuse of power after abuse of power after abuse of power and good hearted people don't want to do that. We don't want to be like that. So, so then we reject it and we throw out the baby with the bathwater. What are the signs of a soulful power embodied human being? Can you share some traits? So that sure. We know so that's one of, that's the first part of the book, right? Like, or the second part of the book, how do, how do, What's the difference between worldly power or egoic power, you know, the, the power that comes from ego or, or soulful power? 
spiritual power. So a couple of the difference, worldly power, which is what we see out there, is, is based on externals, right? How, who do we think has power? People who have money, people who are some part of, or some hierarchy, whether it's political or religious, people who are famous, right? But the thing about it, all those things that they're, they're outside of us, they're external. So that means that they could be here today, gone tomorrow. Whereas the power that we're talking about, soulful power, is the power that comes from within that nobody can give to us and nobody can take it away. So think about, and, and it's humble, right? One, the, the worldly power is about puffing yourself up and look at me how great I am and how big I am. Um, you know, I think of, of, a, of a turkey in heat, you know, puffing itself up to, to, to look big because they must think that's sexy. But it's not, <laughs> right, right, right? Um, whereas the other power, soulful power, is that humble power. Mm. Think of Gandhi, oh. Gandalf, you know, Lord of the Rings with the monastic robes and the sandal feet. Presence, and you, right? It's the presence. You wouldn't know it, right? You wouldn't know the power they hold until there's a need for it. And then, bam, watch out. Gandhi brought the British Empire to its knees when it was at its highest point globally, right? In India, without landing a punch or shooting a gun. That's power. That's power. And nobody can take that away from us. Nobody can give it to us either, right? We're the ones who, who shun it, who give it away, mm. who let it leak. Something that's coming up is opening up to receive is power because then you have more that can come to you. Yes, it's, it, it's inherent, right? It's part of us. The only problem is that we let it go. We let it leak. We give it away. And why do we give it away, Christian? Fear, you know, fear. It's a that fear worthiness? Do we just not see the magnificent, magical, miraculous being that we are? Is it the misunderstanding, you know, when they say Christ consciousness, that word's coming up, this to see yourself as divine? Because I know for me, I used to give my coochie power away very easily <laughs> and, and want to get attention because of my dad left when I was 12. I made up a story that I wasn't good enough unless I do my awesome, you know, extra things that I have to do so people will stay. And so is it that we all have just a lot of messed up childhood that we have not, or is it that we're not learning enough these tools early on as children? Yes, and, and there are misunderstandings, right? There, there are misunderstandings that young minds that didn't know any better concluded, right? So like in, in, in so many cases, mom and dad got divorced and, and one of them leaves. And to those who had nothing to do with us, right? It was whatever was going on with their relationship, whatever was going on with their minds and their ability to have a relationship or not and make a commitment or not. And all the stuff that they, that came down from their lineage and all the stuff that they had internalized about not being good enough. But yet those little minds made it about us. Like, wow, how could daddy leave me? What's wrong with me? Didn't he love me? Am I damaged goods? Right? But it had nothing to do. It had no basis on reality. So those little minds reached these huge conclusions. And then we've been living out of those misunderstandings all our lives. It's, it's almost there. like everybody that starts kindergarten. We need to have our childhood inventory when we get in school. Or somehow it has to be monitored to yeah. do an assessment so that we don't keep recreating these patterns. However, I know they're all divinely there, right? Yes. The order in the system. And now we have free will that we can create. And that's why books like these, Awakening Your Soul Power, is so beneficial. So I highly recommend everybody click down below and check it out and get on Christian's email list and um, receive, receive the wisdom. And September 18th starts the summit. Can you share with us that? Yes, and, and thank you, by the way, for agreeing to participate as one of the uh, amazing, <laughs> amazing presenters. We're going to talk know, about the, sexuality and spirituality, more connected than you think. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just possible that we may have talked about coochie power. <laughs> we did. We talked about it. <laughs> okay, so you'll have to go on the interview, everyone, and register to check out what we were talking about. It's yeah, really so, you know, so the, the summit is called Leaders Transforming Global Consciousness. And yes, that means you, 
right? That means every one of us. So that's another one of these words that we struggle with. And I don't care what it, what, how you, how that leadership expresses in you, whether it's you're leading a book club or your family unit or an international global con conglomerate. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you own it and that you own your power and begin to express that leadership, that heroism. However you do that, as a teacher, as a healer, as an, as an activist for change, at this most critical time, right? So it's about yeah. unleashing our inner power and our inner hero. And, and when we do that, that's when we find personal fulfillment and really make a difference in the world. So it's about empowering and supporting people to step forth and, and take whatever steps may be necessary to make a difference in these critical times. And so for some people, it'll be a first step. Uh, for others, it'll be like revving things up, you know, that they've been fulfilling those roles and making a difference and guiding the way for others. So, so for many of those, it'll be like, all right, what's next? How can I rev this up and take this to the next level? It's a free, free summit. Um, and, and for, for many people who could use some support in boosting the self-confidence and the know-how, right? From people who, who have gone before, who have figured out some ways to do this in terms of fulfilling our pur purpose. It's, it's also, I see it as a, as a virtual oasis, right? From the fear, the uncertainty, all the polarization we're, we're collectively experiencing. And how, how can we use that space to dream up what a new world may look like on the other side of this global crisis. So I highly recommend everybody put this on your calendar, September 18th to the 30th. And every single day you get to receive a different visionary leader, get a dose of inspiration from a different person who's been through this whole hero journey. And so we can reprogram our brain in these 10 days. Is it 10 days? 1893, around there. Um, it's from the new moon to the full moon. New moon to the full moon, wow. For two weeks, awesome. two weeks. Beautiful. And so is there anything else you want everybody to know before we close this awesome time we've had together? Um, yeah, thanks again. Um, well, I think you're gonna provide all the links as to how to do it. Yes, uh, please, down below. <laughs> click, um, click, click. <laughs> yeah, do it, do it. Just join us, it's completely free. Um, because there's so many amazing speakers, we're going to have about 30, 30 or so speakers and presenters. Like and share this. it with your friends, everyone. This is something else that I'm yeah. asking people to do is a part of you being a hero and taking that next step could be sharing this with on your social media, share it on your Instagram, tag us. I'll put our Instagram there um, and our Facebook names. And so that is a part of being brave and courageous is sharing the wisdom of the wisdom. And this is something I ask my Wild Women of Abundance group to share and post and don't just keep it to yourself. It's enough of that. It's time to be generous and share and, and let everybody have the opportunity. We can't wait anymore. That is playing it all on deck, right? Yes, and, and, yeah. and so, so true and so powerful what you're saying because the only way we're gonna break out of these, these hard times, challenging times, and, and the only way that we're gonna break through the existing power structures that are trying to hold on to that egoic worldly power, you know, the hierarchical power that requires for us to step on somebody else in order for us to feel powerful, the only way we're gonna break through this is in community, is, yeah. is in numbers. We've got the numbers. Let's opening up. We've got the numbers, right? There's so many more of us, but we just got to start coming together and, and supporting each other and That's empowering like each other. Yes. Yeah, and which is another one of the differences that you're asking, right? The, the worldly power believes in zero sum, right? That there's a limited amount of power. So you're having power takes away from mine. It's like, wait a minute, who says? Who says? Your power, so that when we think, when we realize it's like, wait a minute, your having power doesn't threaten mine if I know who I am and if I'm in touch with my power and my purpose. So then once we get that, we can support each other and empower each other. Because to be in our power really means that we've honored our love, our love, the love that we are, to really truly, when we're in our power, we're present. So fully engaged in the moment, fully present. Um, and so something that's coming up is how sometimes we even think we can only love one partner our whole life. And 
you know, I, I only can have so much love. And, and it's coming up, this coach that I had, Gladys Diaz, from Heart's Desire International, she had an amazing love. And then he passed away when she was early, like in her 30s. And she kept thinking, there's no way I could ever meet another man and love someone as much as I did. And she did. She met someone else. She met him sooner than what she probably wanted, she said. And she's so in love once again. And it's like people that have children and they're like, how could I have another child and love that other child just as much as I love this first child? And so I think of it like that also that we are so grand, so much more than we've been led to think that we can continue to expand this love and continue and continue and continue. And we can really create magic on this planet. We're so powerful. Believe me, folks, like I'm 47 years in this bodysuit here and I really can't believe how amazing I feel. I mean, I can believe it, obviously, <laughs> but I am so inspired because regardless of what's happening in the world, regardless of what's going on, we can create whatever we wish to create. This is what I've discovered in, in my life of creating all of the things I've created in my life. And so I think it really is about going inside, read, read Awakening Your Soul Power. That's a first step. Attend this summit write to us let us know how you're enjoying it there's a facebook group also when you join so you have this whole new tribe of people yeah. that are on your side and you do have support so you're not just going to benefit from the summit the interviews getting to know all these new people but you're going to have this whole community of like-hearted beings yeah. that will be with you for life you know it's up to you to reach out to us so lots of wonderful sacred opportunities to just really shift and shine and i'm really grateful you're giving me chills and i and i know about the summit and the book in the community i and can't wait to you speak about it with it. passion is like wow it's number 18 18 that's a magical number 18 18 18 september yes <laughs> it's gonna be amazing thank you thank you for having us christian thank so you everybody so much, subscribe to my youtube channel click down below subscribe to, i'm actually gonna put your video after this video so you can all subscribe the button's going to be on the video so have a beautiful day everybody thank, thank you so much michelle much love bye Nindo. bye mm -hmm.